Главное, чтобы мы страну не потеряли. We have dictator as a head of our country. Belarus has been ruled by one man for 26 years now. That was quite sinister. Yeah. But never has his grip on power looked so shaky. We've witnessed hundreds of activists and journalists being arrested and jailed in what people say is the most brutal crackdown they've ever known here. If you see military cars, you need to run. Nothing more, just run. I was just wife and mother. I was absolutely happy with my life. And now I'm going to find out if I will be registered as a candidate to president of our country. Svetlana Tikhonovskaya is a reluctant and unlikely politician. In the run-up to the election, the main opposition candidates have been disqualified and jailed, including her husband. So she's running for president in his place. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I am not sure if, you, if uh, I want this congratulations, you know. Lukashenko. She's taking on Alexander Lukashenko, Belarus's first and only president. We have dictator as a head of our country, you know. So we can't uh, say any word against him. Are you afraid? Yes, I am. <laughs> they can do anything. They can take my children to orphanage or something like this. Police is coming. Maybe we are having uh, illegal meeting here, who knows? Here is forbidden to do anything everywhere, so <laughs> get used to this. Tonight, a protest has been organized to show support for the political prisoners. It's a feeling like your government is lying to you every day, and uh, it's not possible to live with it no more. We are dangerous for our government just standing in the streets. Dissent so close to an election is not welcome. Police start snatching people at random off the street. Dozens of police officers have just got out and started grabbing people off the street, pulling them out of the protest and throwing them into the van there. Over the last month, hundreds have been arrested and jailed in this way. Opposition to the president is growing. His response to the pandemic has tipped people over the edge. He's dismissed the virus as a psychosis, joking it can be cured by drinking vodka. We head out to a neighborhood which traditionally supports the president and we're surprised by how little goodwill towards him is left. Когда начался коронавирус, а по телевизору тебе он говорит, что все нормально. Здравствуйте, Оля. Это моя соседка. Ой, а что тут такое? Что тут за собрание? Я заболела коронавирусом. Я всю пенсию отдала на таблетки. У меня знакомые поумирали. Но они не фиксируют, что это коронавирус. Это за какое-то заболевание. Сколько можно обманывать народ? Я, я вот раз думаю. То ли народ правит, то ли дебилоиды страной правят. Я так и не могу разобраться. Not a single election since Lukashenko came to power has been judged as free or fair. And very few think that this one is going to be any different. Even reporting on the election is difficult. Police. Militia. And it becomes clear we're being tracked. What was that? Yeah, it's plain clothes. The same guys who usually throw the protesters into the vans. Vola is a well-known activist. Here she is at a bus stop, when suddenly she's picked up and taken away by the KGB. We meet up with her a month later, when she's released from prison. She brings us to a secret location, 
to reunite with a friend, an opposition blogger. Veronica is now in hiding. Every night she moves locations. Back at the protests, police cover their faces. They're determined now to clear the streets. If you see military cars, you need to run. Nothing more, just run. Last night we watched people who were protesting against your government be taken off the streets and detained. Is that freedom of speech? Belarusians are tired of being afraid. They're ready to fight for change, even if the odds are stacked against them. Do you think you can win? We don't believe in honest elections. But I still believe that our president will understand that his time is over. People don't want him anymore.